Have you ever come across tenor clef in your bassoon playing and had sort of a sinking feeling in your stomach like, ugh, why do I have to read this? Why can't it just be in bass clef? Be so much easier if it was just in bass clef. Well, in this video, I'm not only going to teach you how to read tenor clef, but also how to get better at tenor clef so be it becomes easy, just as easy as reading bass clef. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Natalie Law and I'm a professional bassoonist and bassoon teacher. And on this channel, I love to help people just like you learn how to get better at the bassoon, whether you're a beginner or a much more advanced player. If you're not already, make sure you're subscribed to learn more content like this that helps you learn to become a better bassoon player. So what exactly is tenor clef and how do we read it? It's just another clef just like bass clef and treble clef um, that bassoonists typically read in and also cellists and trombonists and I think some other instruments, but typically the instruments in the lower register are the ones who are typically reading in tenor clef. And there are other clefs besides treble, bass, and tenor clef. There is alto clef and soprano clef. Um, and so there's different ways to read music on the staff. And tenor clef is just one of those ways to read music. And ideally what tenor clef does is it eliminates some of the ledger lines that we come across when we're reading. So instead of always reading in bass clef so that we're reading super high ledger lines and having to look closely and count the ledger lines, it moves the, the music down so that it's in the staff. So it's just a little bit easier to sort of gauge what the notes are. And you've probably come across some pieces in your playing, whether they're etudes or solos, or maybe in an ensemble where it reads tenor clef and you're like, this is dumb. It's low tenor clef. This would look better in bass clef. Well, sadly, unfortunately, there are a lot of composers who don't necessarily know how to use tenor clef for bassoon and um, it's not always written very well. But the idea is that it reduces the ledger lines that we have to read when we're playing in our upper register. So how do we actually read tenor clef? The thing to remember is that the line that intercepts the two sort of half circles on the tenor clef sign, that is always middle C. Um, and middle C is the C that's just above the bass clef staff. If you're reading bass clef, it moves down a fifth into the tenor, into the staff so that um, those upper notes don't seem so high above the staff. So that's the key to remember. If you're wondering what note is this exactly, just remember line that's intercepting the two half loop things on the tenor clef, that is always middle C. And that's also true if you ever have to read alto clef, which we don't usually have to read alto clef on bassoon, but that's typically true that the line going through those two is middle C. That's how you start reading tenor clef. Now, knowing that piece of information doesn't automatically make it easy to read because now all of the notes are in a different place. So I recommend when you're first learning tenor clef, if you encounter it in a piece that you're playing, I recommend that you just start by writing notes above the staff. And I know some people don't like when you write a lot in your music, but right when you're starting out, I think it's helpful to see the note names uh, written above the staff or below the staff to help you help start to identify. But eventually we wanna move away from that so that we can just identify. Um, and when you see tenor clef, you just revert into a different clef. Um, and your brain just flips between bass and tenor clef, depending on what you're reading. Another thing that's helpful is to actually write out music in tenor clef. So when you're very first starting to read tenor clef, write out a simple song, like Mary Had a Little Lamb, very simple song, write it out on a piece of staff paper and write it out in bass clef. And then underneath that, write it out in tenor clef. So it's the exact same notes, but written in tenor clef and read it first in bass clef, and then immediately after, read it in tenor clef. Actually play it both ways, reading it both ways. And do that with multiple songs. Just start with some simple songs. It shouldn't take you very long to actually write out the parts, um, but I think actually writing and then having to read the music in both clefs is helpful for learning how to read in tenor clef. It's more difficult to read in low tenor clef, especially like below the staff 
tenor clef. That gets really confusing because if you're someone who has also read treble clef before, like me, um, when I first started reading tenor clef, I would get confused because the note immediately below the staff, which is a low C, um, that in treble clef, that looks like a D. You know, so it's it's like a step off from where treble clef would be. Um, and that gets really confusing. You just have to like force yourself like imprint a new uh, a new type of reading into your brain. It's just a new clef and a new type of reading. Um, and it's tricky to do, but it does it does get easier. So I encourage you to start out writing different songs in both bass clef and then consequently in tenor clef and practice seeing and reading in both. And write, when you're incorporating into your music, write the notes in your music to start and then erase those notes and try to read it without. Another tip for getting better at tenor clef is to just force yourself to start reading it more. And one good way to force yourself to start reading it more is to read etudes in tenor clef. So a lot of times if you're playing in a band, you don't often come across tenor clef a lot or, or it's very rare. And even in orchestral playing, it can be a little bit rare sometimes unless you're playing much more advanced rep. And so it's really kind of an etude and solo playing that you're gonna see more and more tenor clef. So if you aren't already, I recommend incorporating etudes into your daily practice. And not only do they help you read tenor clef, but they help you um, learn other skills on the bassoon and get better at certain techniques. So um, if you've never really done any etudes, a good place to start is in the Weisenborn. The very beginning of the book has some easier exercises. Um, the 50 studies that are usually in kind of the back of the book of the Weisenborn um, are a good place to have that has a lot of tenor clef in it and you're going back and forth. Uh, another set of etudes is the Mildy Concert Studies, which I did Mildy Concert Study number one a while back, and you can listen to that. I'll link to it above. And getting into either of these etudes or, or some other ones where you're seeing tenor clef a lot and you do it on a regular basis, it'll get easier over time. If you only make yourself read tenor clef when it comes up very occasionally in your ensemble music, you're not gonna get good at it very quickly. So force yourself to read more of it and use these strategies like writing in your music and then writing out the music in both bass and tenor clef to see the difference. If this video was helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and let me know down in the comments, are you struggling with reading tenor clef? What do you find to be difficult about it? Um, what other questions do you have about reading tenor clef and how to get better at it?